Okay, so we're recording. Um, I just want to get, uh, do you guys have access to the drive, to the content? It's been on the chat. Okay, great. Um, so today we're going to look at a very interesting topic called ideas to improve the world. So we're going to look at the different ways that we can brainstorm different ideas, how to like the, the questions about what what is a good idea, um, what makes a really great idea, how impactful can it be, um, how exactly do I measure that a project is going to be impactful, can this project scale, and all those things. Um, so I think as project managers, we either, number one, we're already tackling projects that are already, you're given a project by a company that you work for, um, but in case you don't already work for a company, or also you run like your consultancy business or services, how exactly do I get to secure this project? How do I get to, how do I get a hold of a project in the first place? And also, once you get a hold of a project, how do I craft a really good proposal? What are some of the major things that need to be in the proposal? And also, uh, yeah, that's basically what we're going to look at today. Um, so I don't know if anyone would like to share a current project they're working on. It could be for their own company or just a side project, maybe a consultant you're handling a certain project anyone yes Bennett. okay um sorry good afternoon I hope you can hear me here this time. Yes, okay, all right. So I just wanted to share a little bit of experience that I recently had. So um, um, I provide um, independent consultancy services. So um, I recently concluded one, I think around August 18th. Yeah, so um, the project basically was to review um, document related to um, energy transition and then renewable energy and then develop a report and also um, do um, an information content that can be used for public education and awareness campaign. So yeah, you know, um, it, it came with some few challenges trying to balance um, expectation and also ensure that the work aligns with what the client was looking for. Yeah, so but then it started with uh, submitting proposal in reference to the terms of uh, uh, reference that was advertised and then getting selected and then um, um, submitting your financials and also um, getting feedback and then uh, having an onboarding exercise to, to start the project and also submitting interim work for it to be reviewed and then getting feedback for it to be closed, yeah. Yeah, that's that's really great. I like how you talked about um, from the initial steps how you got the project, you submitted a proposal, you were selected, and all the way to writing a proposal. That's really great, and it's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Um, so, in the in that so in case you don't have a current project that you're working on and there are always so many calls for proposals call for grants or different projects it's always it's always just good to have an idea of where exactly to look for this project so you can also start applying to them um so over here i think we have just an overview of where to get some of this project um so you can look at, for example, a business or a startup. They could also they could have like the internal projects um, that they're working on, and 
it always comes from the for businesses mostly or startups they always comes from the need to solve a specific problem or maybe they want to come up with a new product and i think for every most of the successful projects they kind of require funding and if you look at businesses or startups their main funding sources comes from maybe the revenue from the organization over time they could also be there could also be outside investors coming to invest in a certain project in a company um and there could also be some money that's budgeted for certain research and development etc um so that's for business and startups uh for so mostly this is you won't know about the projects that are happening unless you're actually in the business or in the startup or maybe they've publicly announced on their platforms or their websites um and they may be calling for guys to apply so uh, the other source of projects could be from the government or the public sector and mostly the governments uh, they always have these initiatives to address things like societal issues or improve infrastructure or growth for the economy and some most of the the um the projects are always very they're very many um they're always vast and you can find especially in considering the different industries are um they're always different so i mostly think they come in terms of uh, maybe a tender or uh yeah maybe just a request for services and so where this money comes from to fund a certain project could be maybe from tax revenues that is it has collected over time or maybe they have received grants from a certain institution um mostly also international loans or aids from international organizations and they could also partner with other private or public companies to come to um to work on a certain project um so the other the other source could be from, from research institutions and universities mostly this is always for academic research uh, for academic research projects so they could have some funds maybe from the government or maybe research foundations um or even um corporate sponsorships or even money that has been cumulatively I look um, collected from different individuals and they mostly fund um, projects that only drive um, that are academic and research based so maybe scientific advancement technological innovations maybe from your universities you can find um, some um, some of these projects there and then we have some projects from NGOs and charities and this could range they're also very they're vast and they could range from um they mostly want to address social and environmental or just humanitarian causes and it's their grants could come from donations from maybe individuals or corporations or foundations or sometimes they could partner with also other um organizations maybe like um maybe even international um international loans or international organizations just to um ensure that a project uh is funded and can be done and then we also have international organizations they have a lot a lot a lot of projects um so for example the un and world bank they always um, but mostly i think for when to get such a such a project you there's you need to have maybe uh, done, uh, you need to have had a lot of impact and it needs to be a company or an institution with, yeah, great impact, have existed for a long time and also has had a lot of impact over time. So um, if you look at you securing a project personally or as a consultant, I mean, it's possible, but it kind of requires you to have that kind of a lot of experience uh in it and yeah so yeah they're they're mostly funded by um imf or different funds that trust funds or 
maybe the different members of um, of states that contribute to um, to the organizations to get money. And then we also have some different um, venture capitalists or investor networks. These are some, or maybe even accelerator accelerators or incubators would also fall into this place. Um, they provide funding for projects that have a lot of impact and they see potential for it to grow and scale. And uh, mostly, or if it's, yeah, it, it should be impactful and sometimes it could range in the areas of technology, healthcare, or even innovative business sectors. So it's all about how good, how good have you really um, done research on these organizations to see where these projects are, where they're being announced, um, yeah, and things like that. And then we also have grants and competitions. Um, this could be from various organizations, internationals, NGOs, even private companies. They just call for competitions and they offer grants um, for a certain project. Um, yeah, and then we also have impact investors who solely want to invest in a project that has a great impact. And we're also going to look at how exactly do you how do you define impact? How do you define a high potential or high growth potential project or an idea? So this is just um, a brief about where to get this project from. And yeah, so um, once, okay, uh, so we also, we're also going to talk about the ideation process. So you probably want to, you've seen a call for application or you want to come up with your own idea and then afterwards you're going to look for funding to maybe grow or scale your project. Um, so it's very important for one to come up with a really great idea. And um, when coming up with a good idea, it's always important to number one, understand the kind of problem you're solving. So if you come up with an idea that doesn't solve a, pro a problem, um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to be impactful in any way. And you can get, um, so you, you need to do a lot of research on this and you can also get, um, inspiration or insights from different websites. So look at the different data that exists from different uh, source, sources. So you can have some different governments offer this um, data private publicly. You can also look at UN statistics. You can also look at different data from social media or internet, etc. And then um, try to map out the ideas on um, so um, a mind map basically can help you do that, but you can also sketch. So a mind map is just um, a digital sketch um, that you can maybe share with fellow people and also collaborate on. Um, and then the other thing is to organize and prioritize your ideas. So you could have like 10 ideas <clears throat> on how to solve a specific problem and then prioritize which which problem uh, or which is the best way to actually solve this specific problem. And then after that, you that's when you develop different concepts or prototypes to see and test if it works. If it works, you then evaluate and refine. So what makes a really good idea or a project is its ability to solve a problem. Um, so that's, that's very key when coming up with um, with a project idea, is it going to solve? What kind of problem am I solving? Am I impacting anyone? And it should also have an impact. So we're also going to talk about all these three in detail. So how do you describe impact? How does a good idea make, how, how do you describe impact? Uh, what do you mean by sustainability and also scalability? Um, a good idea could also be seizing an opportunity, for example, the emergence of Jenny I. So um, it, it could not be solving a problem. Okay, that's contradicting. It could be solving, it should be solving a problem, but you're also leveraging a new technology that you see it has potential to grow in future. So you also want to hop onto that. 
Um, so one of the great things or one of the great um, frameworks that can help you when um, when ideating or when coming up with a problem is design thinking and I know you've probably heard of it before but it's basically a framework that kind of guides you into coming up with um, a good idea or um, just the whole the whole part of coming up with a good project. So the first thing is to always, it's the first thing is on empathy. So empathy kind of helps you define the problem that you're going to solve. So if you look at maybe hunger or any kind of problem that is affecting your neighborhood or your country, uh, you need to have that empathy first to notice that problem and that will kind of motivate you into um, ideating the problem. So um, once you kind of define what the problem is, um, you kind of come up with different ideas that you feel could solve that specific problem. So you could have three different technologies that could probably solve a certain project, a certain problem, sorry and out of those three technologies so let me try to be more specific so for example if you've worked in agriculture uh, you can see that there are different technologies that are used in agriculture we have maybe the advancements of iot internet of things we could have things like um satellite imagery we could also have something like a drone and you're trying to monitor the water usage in a farm so out of those three out of those three technologies which one exactly is going to work best for this and when looking at the best idea you have to look at it in terms of um the amount of money that's going to be spent how effective it is um and all those resources that would be required to um, solve that particular problem. So always ensure you come up with the best idea to the best idea to solve a certain problem. And then after finding the best idea, you come and create a prototype. So this could be building the project itself. If it's a hardware that you need to build, um, be, <clears throat> sorry. Um, build that prototype and then uh, the final thing is always testing and continuously iterating the the process so making sure that it works well and if it doesn't continue improving it and yeah so you can read more about it about the design thinking process here um, sorry kind of have a cold today uh, but yeah, you can have a look at the five stages of design thinking process on this link. And yeah, so when talking about a good idea, so most of the time uh, when we think about an idea and sometimes we might think about an idea because we've only seen one person go through it, but is it is it okay for you to continue building on that idea if it only affects like one percent of the population and not like a bigger population so sometimes you could be solving a problem that only affects you and yourself and if you look at it in terms of scaling and also sustainability it might not really it might it might not really scale so it's always important to um to back your idea with a good data source. So this, there are very many different, these are just three or four examples of where you can get data, but you can get it from different, um, it's good to get data to back your idea. So how many people are actually experiencing this kind of problem? Um, so <clears throat> without, you can, so you can maybe go and do things like maybe um, collecting data using different methods. You can get them online. Um, you can maybe use different government agencies. This is a Kenyan government agency. Uh, you can also have other different international organizations that have publicly, um, that publicly post 
um, some kind of data on their website. So for example, this, and also research institutions like Dolberg, um, Ipsos Innovate. Um, so all of this are just for the Kenyan um, market, I think. Yeah, all this are for, but in your own country, I think you can also try and research and find um, concrete data um, or in the different websites that exist in your country. And then we also have open data portals, for example, this one. We also have this one, is a, this is for Kenya. This is the one in the US, uh, data.gov, and also a European data portal. Also, World Bank has one. And then you can also get more insights and data from social media, how people are reacting to a certain thing. Um, I think, I don't know if you guys have worked on social media data analytics, but if you have, you've noticed that you can collect tweets based on a certain topic, for example, floods, you can be able to collect all the tweets about flood that happened in a certain area and you can be able to analyze all of that. So that's just a way of um, finding proof to back your data. Um, so for this specific challenge, we would like, um, I would like for you to come up with um, ideas specifically in the AI because you have already been introduced into the concept of AI and uh, out of that, out of you learning and understanding how these technologies work, we believe that uh, there's a certain idea that has come to mind about, oh, maybe I should use this to do this, maybe in your current workplace or just just uh, in any, any way that you think. Um, so this is just a brief of the different AI technologies that we have. So text generations, for example, the GPT, and then we have the voice gen voice generation, sorry. Um, so like text to speech, and you can also have the, an exa another example of voice generation could be um, maybe something like Siri, or there are these apps that can help you translate, um, so you, that can help you translate a certain word uh, verbally. So you can say translate, um, creating new con context to Italian, to Itali Italian language, and it's going to do that. Um, and then we've also, I'm sure we've also worked on image generation. Um, so this are just, can you think about a certain, uh, we're going to look at the exercise itself. Uh, but yeah, basically it's going to test on this AI technologies. And then also we have the video generation um, models. We've seen some videos online, I'm sure, on uh, maybe the president of the US doing something funny um, and also some use it for music generation. So out of all of this, can you come up with an idea that can uh, impact uh, from especially Africa. Uh, do you see an idea that you feel can impact um, Africa and it can scale and it can also uh, be sustainable? We're going to look at uh, that on the challenge document. Uh, but for now, let's uh, talk about this concept on measuring impact. So I think for a good project, it needs to have an impact. Um, number one, it's because you're more highly funded um, if your project um, kind of has an impact. So when we talk about impact, it's basically um, assessing the extent to which a project achieves its intended outcomes and creates a positive change. So the for when measuring impact for a project, the first thing before you get started with a project is you need to understand the objectives or um, objectives or what what exactly do I expect to get from this uh, from this project? Um, so the goals should be very clear and uh, use 
smart um, it should be smart objectives also um, so once you have the objectives you need to also identify the different um, KPIs for example um, how many beneficiaries are going to come out from this project um, is it going to increase um, knowledge and skills in in this in a certain community or is it going to reduce a certain problem um yeah such such kind of uh things and then you kind of need to collect and analyze the data so once you've done the project and you've seen you've gotten this number of uh, people in the project who've um yeah you and so you need to analyze all that data and also send feedback to the partners and participants um, according to how well did we hit our KPIs? Did we get to actually achieve our projects? Can we continuously, um, is, it, is this project, um, can we continue building on this project by iterating it further or just um, it's not feasible for it to grow? So in terms of, impact you need to understand like how many people exactly are going to um, be helped with this certain project and when we talk about sustainability and scalability uh, so when for the projects that you're going for so the ideas that you're going to come up with um, they should be sustainable and also very scalable so when talking about sustainability it could involve a number of factors so for example the financial viability is it is it financially viable like um it should not cost more than what the project is than what the project is planned for so there's no need for you going to use a technology that's going to cost millions and it's not going to get a lot of impact and then also look at the um, resource efficiency so this could be in terms of human resource technology software hardware all of it um, is it is it efficient enough and then also look at the community engagement so if the community isn't really engaging with your project well is there something that you're missing or it will also take you back to um, idea number one is this a good idea is it helping anyone in any way so if you if you get a lot of um, engagement in the community um, uh, that also kind of helps you understand um, whether the project is sustainable or not. Um, so also in terms of capacity building, is it something that can be um, multiplied? Not, not multiplied. Is it something that can be taught to many other people to also um, to kind of adopt your project or uh, yeah, to kind of adopt the project. Is this something that can be trained to other people as well? Um, also, monitoring and evaluation. Um, I've talked about it, but uh, normally, um, in terms of sustainability, can you ensure that... Uh, so, uh, yeah, mo monitoring and evaluation. Can you ensure that uh, for your project to be sustainable, that it's continuously monitored and also evaluating based, based on the different KPIs that were set. Um, so that's on sustainability. Um, so also look at it in terms of um, in the next coming five or 10 years, will this project still be useful or not? Um, who, how many people will it have impacted then? Um, so also when we talk about scalability, we're talking about the ability of the project to kind of grow over the years. So in terms of adoption by other partners or collaborations, in terms of um, maybe replicability, can, can this project be also, if it was done in a certain town, can the same be done in a different um, town or, or country? and also achieve the same results. So if maybe you're monitoring um, 
farm, uh, how a farm is doing, and you've successfully managed to do it in um, in one country. Can you also replicate it to the other country? Um, yeah, and also look at it in terms of uh, technology and innovation in terms of, so technology is rapidly advancing and people are trying to use, um, the use of smartphones and computers have become very, um, like, I don't think we can survive without them at this moment. Um, but look at it in terms of can technology in a way help you drive, um, drive, drive your project because um, yeah, can it help you drive your project? And also uh, partnerships and collaborations. This also is one of the factors that can tell you whether you're scaling or not. Um, so the more partners you get on a certain project, the more partners or collaborations you get interested in your project, um, that can show that um, your idea is actually viable and can be and has the potential to scale. Um, so that's just a brief of, of yeah, that's just a brief of what of what to expect for the content. Um, so for this week's challenge, it's basically um, it's basically just uh, coming up with different ideas that you feel uh, using AI can help um, transform the world that we currently are, especially in Africa. So just a small introduction on how we've witnessed um, the different technological advancements in uh, the past years, for example, the smartphones and internet, they, they kind of helped um, companies, big companies and different applications. They're very many, but just to name one or two, Bolt and Uber, that has maybe transformed transportation and then we have um, how social media has now connected different people around the world so with the advancement of ai uh, we expect the next 10 or 15 years to be very different um, we kind of don't know how yet um, uh, maybe we know a little bit but in 10 years it's going to be very different so the challenge for this week is to just think about how exactly do you um, think about this AI um, impacting maybe uh, 5 million young people in Africa in the coming five years. So you have to be very specific with your idea and describe exactly how you're going to measure the impact of your idea and also the role that technology will play. And in this case, how will AI um, help to impact uh, such, uh, to make an impact of 5 million people? Um, so it's you're going to provide your answer. If you're used to writing a storyboard, then you can use it. If you're okay with creating slides, that's okay. But a maximum of six slides. Um, so, um, the main things that you should have on the slides is number one, to state the problem that you're um, addressing. So, without a problem, um, are you really solving anything? So, number one is to state the problem that you're addressing, and this problem needs to affect um, at least five million people uh, globally and yeah so you should clearly explain the problem you're solving um if you have a data source that's a bonus uh use some data to show the scale of the problem um and then mention if this is occurring maybe in your own country or maybe in africa or even worldwide and then the second one is how exactly are you going to solve this problem using ai and also ensure that it should be feasible enough. Um, so um, can your proposed solution be realistically implemented using Journey AI? Um, or maybe there's already another technology that already exists that's solving the same problem. Weigh those two and see exactly which one, um, which one works best. And then also, give a brief of how technology will play in um, your proposed solution. 
um yeah and bonus if you find past solutions to this problem and also um where you'll realistically find funding um if not from your government at least resources where you think you can realistically um get some funds to um to continue building your project um so this is just a few housekeeping on how to create your bullet points and then we have a guiding template here um so it's basically uh just a guide with topics so on the first one should have a cover page and the topic and then introduction to the problem and then the solution that you're offering and it should be very realistic and be implementable in your country and also technology's role um so compare the different technologies that are being used and yeah and then maybe improvements over past solutions that currently exist and yeah your funding strategies um so yeah that's that's i think basically it um this is basically a link to the ideas and then if you're wondering how to create a storyboard there's a link to guide you here uh but if if storyboarding seems like a lot of um um if it's yeah if it's if it seems too hectic you can just use a regular ppt or just use this uh template that you've been given here um yeah that's basically it for today do we have any questions? Any suggestions? Yes, Bernard. OK, so thank you for the presentation. Um, I checked to see if I could find a challenge, uh, the career document, but I've not seen it. So I don't know, maybe when you're done, you could follow it up uh, to share with, with us. It would be uh, helpful. All right, Um, on the drive or on your email? OK, I, I checked uh, Slack, though, and then um, I'm here to check the drive. So probably maybe I'll have to check on that one. Okay, I think I've also shared it here. It's pinned on the messages, but I'll also share it on Slack. Okay, all right. So, and then um, in terms of the idea, are you um, looking at uh, maybe like um, creating a platform or how a system platform can be utilized and also how it can be made more accessible for people to understand it? What was the focus of the idea? um so we don't have any restrictions yet but yeah it could be improving a certain technology that exists so it may be uh, improving the a certain website with maybe chatbots that's still uh, implementing ai in it um as long as it just improves um as long as it improves um the existing technologies um if not replace it yeah Um, did I answer your question well? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, also, just a follow-up question. Would you guys be interested in a session afterwards, maybe to just um, discuss or brainstorm? Maybe next uh, on the next session next week, we could start by looking at um, the different ideas people came up with and we can maybe discuss on it. Would you guys be interested in it? Thumbs up for a yes, thumbs down for a no. Okay, only one. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I think it would be nice to see what, uh, how different people would um actually, um how different people are just thinking and the different ideas that they would come up with using AI. Um, thanks. I think that marks the end of our session today. Okay, yes, Terrafin. Thank you. Uh, it's a good presentation. Maybe as a suggestion, 
uh, we will see uh, where is our uh, drawback or if we clearly understand this presentation or not, we'll, we'll see it on while we are uh, starting the challenge. So uh, we might face some challenges while doing this task. So in this case, if you have time, maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or up to Friday, if you can present yourself during the stand-up session, we may raise some question or the colleagues, the trainees might raise the question that they face while they are doing the task. So uh, before we submit this uh, report, I think on Friday might be, most probably on Friday. Before that, on one of the stand-up session, if you are uh, present there, we, 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 it, it will be good, I think, to make a correction before we submit the report. Thank you. Okay, um, that's a good idea. Um, sure, I'll, I'll join the Friday stand-up for any questions. Thanks. Um, any other questions? <laughs>